The June winds sweep across Medicine Mountain's northwestern ridge. Dawn creeps forward as the shaman stands at his station at a cairn just outside a rock circle. He faces toward the pole in the circle center, but looks past the pole to the eastern horizon, ready to observe the rising sun. Slowly, the sun emerges, aligning with the center pole of the rock circle. It is time. First Nations of the North American Northern Great Plains have used rock circles for more than 5,000 years, ostensibly to make astronomical observations, but the knowledge of the uses of these relics of Native American spiritual practices are largely lost in the mists of prehistory, although some are still in use. In this video, we look at crafted and stone-based circular creations, some of them now known as medicine wheels, exploring their possible ancient uses, their current uses, and the differences between them. The circle is a very important symbol in First Nation cultures. In general, the circle represents the cycle of life, the completeness of life in the world and connection with the whole universe. It can also mean other related things depending on how the circle is constructed and the colors used. The following is a general look at a crafted medicine wheel. I use the term crafted to differentiate between the small, handheld or painted wheels and the large stone wheels. This wheel, used by an Anishinaabe, consists of a circle with two crossed lines in the center, dividing the circle into four colored quadrants, creating a medicine wheel. The quadrants represent the four cardinal directions and the cycle of a human life. According, according to Lillian Pitawanakwat, an Anishinaabe or Ojibwe elder, Yellow is east, where life begins, the spring, where a person exists in the spirit world and then takes on human form, childhood. Red is south. The summer of youth lies in this direction. We enter the quandary stage, the stage in which we are neither a child nor adult. It is in this stage that we lose our oneness, our sense of our origins, causing us to search for something we used to have, asking, who am I? Where do I come from? West is black, the direction of the adult stage. What we learned, what we experienced in the summer of the South now ripens, enabling us to play our part in society. However, we notice the sun setting in the West. This dying represents the arising and passing away of ideas and maybe dreams. It is a reminder of the constant change within us and our approaching transition back to the spirit world. Finally, north is white, winter. We have run our race and our passage from spirit to childhood, from childhood to adulthood, and played our part as adult members of our society and culture. It is now time to retire and reflect on our past. We understand the approaching return to the spirit world and embrace all aspects of ourselves. This is the place of wisdom. This is just one use of a craft wheel. The location of the colors and their meanings differ across First Nations. For example, the Lakota interpretation of the wheel, according to the Akta Lakota Museum and Cultural Center, is as follows. The outer circle represents the sacred outer boundary of Earth, the Sundance circle, the sacred hoop the continu continuous pattern of ongoing life and death. The lines crossing in the circle, circle center represent the sacred paths of humans and the sun. A person stands when praying at the point at which they cross. In some instances, like a person's college graduation, an eagle feather is attached to a wheel as a gift. The feather represents the omniscient power of the great spirit and the completion of a great task. Yellow is east. The sun rises in the east, bringing light and enlightenment to the universe. The sun moves in a clockwise pattern, a pattern to which all good things should conform. It is the place of wisdom and new beginnings, of life, and the brown eagle is its messenger. White is south. The south is associated with life after death, 
directing men on their journey to that end. Beginning in the South, life gets its nourishment of every kind from its source. The crane is the messenger of this place, a place associated with warmth, generosity, and happiness. The West is represented by the color black, the place of the setting sun where day ends. It's associated with rain and of water that purifies, from which comes joy and growth. The thunder being resides here, producing thunder and standing against evil and disrespect. Its messenger is the black eagle. Red indicates the north. Winter lives here, promoting good he health and growth. Doers of wrong look to the north for correction, for the wisdom needed to straighten their paths. For those who struggle to walk the path of right, the north provides the strength, the endurance to persevere. The messenger of the north is the bald eagle. Although the Lakota and Anishinaabe have different designs, the underlying symbolism is the same, the cyclical nature of existence and how humans should walk within the circle, always cognizant of the right path and whether they have strayed. Let's now move to rock circles and apply if what we know about craft circles can help us understand their use and meaning. Rock circle medicine wheels are round, but in many cases, that's all they have in common with crafted wheels. In fact, researchers have no real idea about their original uses. They come in several formats, as shown here. As we discuss these structures, it's important to note that no two are exactly the same. Depending on how archaeologists define medicine wheel, there are about 70 or 170 located in the northern Great Plains. The largest number, and the oldest, are in Canada. Because it would take more time than I have in this video to try to visit them all, I'll focus on the most popular, and likely the most researched, the Big Horn Medicine Wheel, which falls generally into Group 6. The Big Horn Medicine Wheel is located in northern Wyoming, on an exposed shoulder of Medicine Mountain, at an altitude of 9,640 feet. I've seen slightly different measurements for the circle and its components, so I'll use those taken by archaeoastronomer John Eddy, the first person to perform a detailed analysis of the site in 1972, publishing his findings in 1974 in the journal Science. The drawing, however, is from a 1903 American Anthropologist article by S.C. Sims. The wheel resembles a wagon wheel with 28 evenly spaced spokes extending from a 4 meter in diameter center rock carn. Most of the spokes terminate at the circle's outer rim, which has a 25 meter or 82 feet diameter. Five smaller cairns, each 1 to 1 and a half meters in diameter, are placed at irregular intervals around the circle. Each of these carns resembles a horseshoe, with its open side facing the center of the wheel. One of the spokes extends four meters beyond the outer rim to a sixth circular carn. Although various estimates exist concerning its age, it appears to have been constructed by northern Great Plain First Nations, Crow, Sioux, Arapaho, Shoshone, and Cheyenne, and possibly shared by them between 800 and 1,000 years ago. But the only evidence of specific nation use is pottery from the interior of the interior of the wheel, identified as Shoshone and Crow. No evidence exists of the wheel and Karn's intended uses. The local First Nation people knew of the Bighorn Wheel and its discovery in 1895, but according to Sims, they did not know where it was. Further, the First Nation people didn't call it a medicine wheel, a term coined by those of European descent who discovered it. To the First Nations, the term medicine refers to spiritual healing. Some researchers believe that the Bighorn Circle was used for spiritual healing, regaining balance on the path I described earlier when describing craft circles, which is still practiced today. However, Eddie and others believe it had another or other use. 
As shown in this figure from his 1974 article, Eddy could positively show solstice alignments. Note that Eddy's depiction of north is different than that of Sims on our previous graphic, placing the long spoke in the southwest instead of Sims south. Standing at the carn outside the wheel's rim, E, looking over the center carn, we see the point of sunrise at the summer solstice. If we move to carn C and look over the center once more, we see the point at which the summer solstice sun sets. Before moving on to Eddie's more controversial star alignments, let's examine why the solstice, solstice measure is important. The bighorn wheel has the same layout as a Sundance ritual structure, as shown in another Eddie drawing. Beginning at the summer solstice, the Sundance ritual, performed by Northern Great Plains First Nations, lasted about four days. Still practiced, the purpose of the Sundance is to purify the spirit, to rejoin with the whole, to restore one's journey on the path represented by the four-part crafted medicine wheels. First Nation beliefs consider the summer solstice important because it is the sun's closest point to the earth as it travels its annual path, its cycle. There is archaeological evidence showing that the area surrounding the wheel has been used for about 7,000 years, long before the construction of the wheel. These artifacts include hearth, charcoal, and wood fragments. Stone teepee rings also indicate at least intermittent near-wheel habitation, possibly during times of ritual observances. It's been suggested that the bighorn wheel was used for the sun dance, placing a pole in the center of the central cairn. However, the wheel is not aligned with the four cardinal directions, as required for the ritual, and there's no evidence that it was used for that purpose. Finally, let's look at Eddie's conclusions about the wheel's star alignments. As shown in Eddie's drawing, he asserted that Karns could be aligned with the rising of Sirius, Rigel, and Aldebaran, with cycles associated with periods before and after the summer solstice. Eddie's star alignments don't match today, but he attributes this to the changes in star positions over the years. While going back in time to determine when the Karns would have been in star alignment, he postulated that the wheel had been constructed between 1500 CE and 1700 CE, with the probable year of 1700 CE. Even using 1500 CE, this is far from other minimum estimates, based on material artifacts and other data, of construction over 800 years ago. The use of the wheel to identify the period alignments with stars is considered a stretch by Edwin Bar Barnhart and highly improbable by mathematician Sherry Towers. Towers contends that a site with multiple sight lines is bound to align with something. The probability of an intentional design aligning, as Eddie describes, is highly improbable. You can visit her detailed analysis by following the link in the selected bibliography in the video description. The solstice alignment, however, is considered probable, and it conforms to First Nation veneration and use of the sun and its movements. The sun dance ritual of the Northern Plains peoples is just one example. Another is the symbolism of the cross lines and the crafted circles, as described earlier in their interpretation by the Lakota. Another example of tracking the sun is the medicine wheel petroglyph of the Fremont people. The petroglyph, known as the Sheep Spiral, is located in Nine Mile Canyon, Utah. According to mythologist John Lundwall and archaeologist and archaeoastronomer John McHugh, the edge of sunlight moves to specific points on the wheel and accompanying sheep, aligning at particular points at the summer solstice and fall equinox. The grandfather of medicine wheels, known as the Majorville Wheel, constructed similarly to the Bighorn Wheel, provided artifacts that put its construction at about 4,550 BP, before present. Deborah Scherer provides this estimate, but also writes that other estimates place construction later, at about 3,200 BP. This wheel, laid out before Stonehenge in Britain, enables alignment with the sun at the summer and winter solstices. 
My last example is one of many West Coast missions built to conform with First Nation belief systems, including sun alignment. As shown, the light from the sun at the winter solstice flows down the aisle, illuminating the altar. So what can we conclude from this? Medicine wheels, or spiritual healing loci, are scattered throughout the northern Great Plains. Still, we have no evidence as to their actual use when they were first built. Present-day First Nation people still use some of them for rituals, including Bighorn. Still, there's no provable connection between today's rituals and those of the past. There is evidence, however, that First Nations use the sun as part of timekeeping and personal path rituals. This supports, but does not absolutely prove, medicine wheel use for astronomical sightings. Although solstice measuring is a strong probability, it is unlikely that the other cairns at Bighorn, for example, were used for star alignment. Until additional artifacts, oral myth, or other support is discovered that supports stargazing or other uses, it makes sense to tentatively settle on the spoked medicine wheel's connection to the sun, sun-based rituals, and possibly other uses designed to recover a person's balance, a balance achieved by understanding our integration, our place, our role in the universe. Well, that's it for this video. As you can see, the topics we'll discuss in this channel will analyze both ancient and current beliefs. There's no correct answer for most of what we cover when we do this. Instead, we explore and come to tentative conclusions based on what we learn while being open to changing our beliefs when additional information becomes available. Please subscribe if you learned something or were challenged by what I covered in this video. If you want to be able to engage in in-depth discussions about the video topics and download the guides associated with the videos, while also supporting the production of these videos, please become a member of my Patreon page. Until next time, keep an open mind.